Alright, today I'm going to be playing some Doom, one of the most controversial and one of the most successful game franchises in history. As previously mentioned, I don't feel like talking over uh, the game. Perfect. So what was I saying? Oh yes! Doom, the most controversial and one of the most successful game franchises in history. Which I already mentioned in my review, and I also did make mention in my Doom December stream a couple of years ago. Now what's interesting is that people they say that controversy creates cash, and well, Doom did create a not only a lot of controversy, but it was also a financial success as well. Yes, it did garner attention from media outlets for its uh, depiction of extreme violence, but I gotta be honest. Did people really just blow this thing out of proportion just to get their 15 minutes of fame? Because humbly and realistically speaking, I just firmly don't believe that games like this would cause real world violence. I think people just take this sort of thing out of proportion because they just want to find an easy way out. They don't want to do their research, they don't want to pick up their facts. I mean... It was just a game. I mean, if you take this thing a little too seriously, you just need to reevaluate your life choices a little more. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna be playing Doom for about, oh, 15, 20 minutes and I'm just gonna go crazy and, uh, well, yeah. Anyways, in my opinion, what I believe when made Doom so successful is uh, how easy of a game this is to pick up and play. And also, this is also one of those games that people just kept talking about. I believe up to this point. Of course, of course, with success like this, this was also bound to be released on multiple platforms, including but not limited to the watered-down version of on the Super Nintendo. There was one for the Sega CD. I believe, I, yeah, the Jaguar had a release. Macintosh definitely, I believe, had a release also. Just to name a few. But the problem is, is that I think I made mention of this in my Wolfenstein uh, vlog that when you try to port something onto another system, it's just not as good as the original. I don't know if it's just because maybe people grew attached to it or perhaps maybe expectations were a little high. No matter the case, I always firmly believe that games like this and Wolfenstein 3D will always leave a mark in PC gaming history. But that's just my opinion, mind you. Oh yes, also one thing I was also gonna mention, speaking of uh, history, like I said in my Doom review, is that this grew a lot of attention from not only parents, but also I think maybe a couple of religious groups? Uh, didn't seem too keen on this game just because, uh, well, because of all the satanic imagery. Well, I can sum that part up in only two letters. B. S. I just firmly think that having these kind of images uh, actually adds something to the game. I believe it just adds atmosphere. Makes it all the more uh, scary. Of course, in 1993, when this came out, it was considered, quote-unquote, scary. Nowadays, you look at it, it's like... Eh, big whoop. But, like I said before, if we didn't have games like Doom, we wouldn't have other games like Duke Nukem 3D, we wouldn't have Quake, and the list goes on and on and on. Of course, going back to what I said about uh, this game being a financial success is... It seems like whenever... Uh, Something like this gets released on PC and makes a lot of money. It seems like everybody wants to cash in on the, uh... On the, what am I saying? Oh yeah, cash in on the, uh, success. But unfortunately, they don't quite do the... They don't quite, uh, get the job done like the PC version had. Probably because, maybe because the hardware is a little more limited and... You have to work with what you're given. And unfortunately, for the most part, it just doesn't work out. Another thing that's introduced, 
game introduced, if I remember correctly, was online multiplayer. But, I think I may mention this in one of my other videos. Is that playing DOS games online was actually a lot harder than it looked. And I think one of the most uh, common ways that people could play PC or DOS games online was through a was through a modem. Or if I remember correctly, you enter in a specific number, and then that number goes out to another person's modem, quote unquote, making a call. Then that person picks up, and they're like, "Hey, you want to play Doom or Duke Nukem 3D or Quake or whatever?" And they would. That's how you would connect online. Memory serves me right. Probably the biggest thing that uh, this game introduced was the mini-map, which people were complaining that in Wolfenstein 3D had none. It made them feel more lost than a rat in a rat maze. Which in one way helps, but in another way also brings the challenge down. Because with the map, you know what's gonna happen. You, know, you need to... <laughs> Let me try that again. With the mini-map, it's pretty much like, okay, you're supposed to go here next, or yeah, you need to go over here. Whereas with Wolfenstein, it's like, okay, you gotta use your, you gotta use your good sense of awareness and good judgment to figure out where to go next. And like I said, to some it makes it feel like you're lost in a rat maze. To me, it's more about exploration, getting to know the environment. Those are the games like this. If you know your way around Doom, like truly has you should be able to blaze through an entire episode and probably about in an afternoon if you're that good and if you know uh, where every little nook and cranny is oh yeah one other thing I let it slip through my mind is that in addition to ending doom success was the Doom guy himself. He certainly made a name for himself in the Doom franchise, just like BJ did with the Wolfenstein franchise. And that's how he became such a memorable character. Of course, back in the 90s, it seems like every uh, young person wanted to aspire to be the next big tough guy or the next big, uh, well, you get the idea. Because I think things have changed between now and then. Where I believe your options are a little more limited in comparison to today where you have like all these people who are just who just wanna grab a slice of that uh tough guy cake. And I know there's somebody down there. Okay. I mean you have characters like the guy from Quake, you got Duke Nukem, you've got Lil Wang from the Shadow Warrior series, just to name a few. Of course, even though they all branched off in their own directions, they all shared one common trait. They just wanted to be the biggest and toughest. And like I said, that's, in my opinion, that was not an uncommon trait back in the olden days. Of course, like I said, this is all based on my personal opinions and experience. And I know your opinion will differ from mine. And of course, if you want to share your uh, thoughts, you can just drop a comment.
I was a little quiet there for a moment because I want to give you guys a moment to reflect on what I said. And like I said before, if you guys want to share your opinions, just go ahead and drop a comment and I will respond. Oh yeah, another thing I was going to mention is that what also made him successful is the, uh, the roster, including the Doom guy. Of course, a lot of these enemies also made recurring appearances in later Doom games, which includes Doom 2, the sequel, which came out a year later, which also, which is, in my opinion, now, hear me out, which I think was much more polished in comparison to this game. I mean, no offense to those who, uh, who love the first Doom. I'm just saying that I think the second Doom game picked up a lot of the issues that the first game had. And I'm not talking about the introduction of the super shotgun either. Oh, 
these barrels. Which I think is a nice touch, but it just feels a little... I don't know, it feels like it's a little much. And of course, the real question is, uh... Who thought it would be a good idea to leave these barrels laying around? But that's just my take. Chainsaw action. Oh yeah, one thing I didn't mention at the beginning of the uh, game is all these, all these uh, bodies of your former comrades. I feel like this is actually a really good touch because it gives you that sense of, okay, this is what you're going to expect, so no one's going to hold your hand for this journey.
about uh, games like this is that the difficulty is gradually increases. It's not like, oh hey, we're gonna start dropping nice and easy or something. We the idea of how the game goes and then throw a curveball and be like, okay, you're gonna be facing uh, 500 nymphs at once. I was gonna say, if that ever came about in any of these games here, I would start to turn it off and be like, yeah, I think we need to go do something else. picked up this partial invisibility. This is the only power-up I was never sure what did. I mean, I tried looking it up on Doom's wiki site, and even then I'm like, what? I mean, I don't know if it's supposed to be like, keep me hidden from enemies or what, or reduce damage or something. <laughs> Why 
I also love how the enemies uh, fight amongst themselves. So I guess there's pretty much uh, you no know, camaraderie between these guys. They're all like, hey, I'm gonna kill the Doom guy first. Oh no, I'm gonna kill the Doom guy first. Now nah, I'm gonna kill the Doom guy first. I mean, that's just a concept you really don't see in games anymore. I mean, that's something I would love to see once more. At least once more. I mean, at the very end, is there like what? Uh, what like a big bowl of uh, what is it, like a big bowl of ice cream at the end of this, or perhaps a pot of gold? Maybe a dream vacation to the other side of Phobos? I don't know. But yeah, I would love to see games with uh, where enemies fight amongst themselves. Okay, I think you guys get the idea. Um, Alright, thanks everyone for tuning in to this edition of DOS Vlog, and I will see everybody next time.